Praise the Lord. This is Theophilus McPherson of Revelation of Alpha and Omega Ministry, a ministry that um upcoming going to be a physical ministry right now. But right now it's an online ministry. Yes, an online ministry. So if you want to give your contribution, your donation for for this ministry to ongoing, uh, go to my website. That's Rome International dot o r g that's rome international dot o r g and give a generous donation and i will be on the the mood to to help especially africa oh africa will be delivered yes oh africa will be delivered but i need your donation i need your help so this ministry can go help africa because my friend africa is in desperate need desperate financially spiritual need and if you send a prophet there the prophet will pray the prophet will maneuver in helping africa so today i'm still on the subject of remember thy creator so ecclesiastic chapter 12 verse 1 and it say remember now thy creator in the day of youth while the evil day cometh not nor the years draw it nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them and today i'm dealing with marriage yes my friend marriage because the bible say in the last days in Noah days amen to be married and given in marriage but think about it my friend now solomon was a wise man solomon was a rich man and solomon it was the author of what I've read saying, remember the creator in the days of youth. And, and, and it's a reason why Solomon said, remember the creator in the days of youth. Because Solomon, the Bible say in, 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 in 1 Kings verse 11, he meant glory to God. But King Solomon loved many strange women together, amen, with the daughter of Pharaoh, Woman of Moabites, Ammonite, Ammonites, and Zoanite, and Hittites, of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye should not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon cleaved unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives princess and three hung concubine and his wife turned his heart away amen i must read it again because it's very important that we listen to this for those that are considering marriage amen and he had 700 wives princess and three hung concubines and his heart turned and his wives Turn away his heart. And it came to pass when Solomon was old. Amen. Glory to God. When Solomon was old. The Bible says when Solomon was old. And it came to pass when Solomon was old. That his wife turned away his heart on the other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. As was his father, his heart. And it came to pass. Amen. Listen. And it came to pass when Solomon was old and his wives turned his, his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. Verse 5, for Solomon went after Ashdod, the goddess of Zodanin, and the Milcom, and the abomination of the Ammonite. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went out not fully after the Lord, as did his father. Then did Solomon build a high place of Kishtosh, an abomination of Moab in the hill is before Jerusalem, and for the Maltox, the, the abomination of the 
of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all the strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their God. And the Lord was anger. Are you listening to me? Amen. The Bible says, And the Lord was anger with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which he appeared unto him twice. Verse 10. In the name of Jesus Christ. Concerning, amen, glory to God, concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Amen. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For much as this is done of thee, thou shalt not keep my commandment and my statue, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rent it out of the hand of thy son. Hey, glory to God. And the emphasis that I want to bring for you, to, to tell you all, especially young people, especially those that are thinking about marriage. But the Bible say, listen, verse 4, but it was, but... For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as, as, as was the heart of David his father. Amen. Verse 2. Of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, he shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon cleaved unto these in love. Remember thy creator. Think about God before you say, I do. Think about God before you say, I do. Is the person you are marrying God? Amen. Is the person you are marrying love God? Do you love God? Does she love God? Are they saved and washed in the word of God? Do they have fellowship with God? Do they love the word of God, the Bible? Do they love fellowship with the saints of God? Solomon make a mistake and he tell us to remember God. Solomon was the wisest and the richest and, and he tell us to remember the creator of the universe. Think about God, not just on Sunday only. And I'm going to say this. Before you get married, pray to God, is this person a heathen? Yes. Does this person love God? Does this person love the fellowship of God? Is this person lover of God more than lover of pleasure? Amen. Does this person love God? He may go to God. Yes, I made a mistake, my friend. I looked at beauty rather than looking to be a wholeness of God. Amen. I was tricked, my friend. Yes, I was tricked. This person went to church and all of a sudden they stopped going to church. They stopped reading their Bible. They stopped praying. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So that's what I'm telling you. In these series, remember God. Amen. You got to remember God. You got to marry you a virtuous woman. Marry you a man that love God. A man of God. A man of God, not a man that, that preach forth the word of God. A man of God is a man that love 
God, love the things of God. Amen. Glory to God. But the Bible say about a virtuous woman. The Bible say, give not thy strength. Now this is this is what this man, this this, this woman was telling her son. Hey, glory to God. Like I'm telling those that, that are planning on getting married about a virtuous woman. Hey, Amen. Don't give your strength to a woman. But listen, in Proverbs 31 chapter, hey, Amen. I'm a, and I must come close to you by reading this, 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 this text in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we made mistake of marrying the wrong person. I must come close to and tell you that we made mistake of marrying the wrong person. But what is the right person? The Bible say when a man found a wife, it didn't say find a girlfriend. It didn't say find a, a woman. When a man found a wife, he found a good thing and a favored with the Lord. And it go the opposite. When a woman is approached by a, a man, make sure it's a two-way communication. Make sure, amen, that God tells you as much as God tells him. Amen. Just don't go by, say, the Lord told me. So so God does not a one-way communication radio. Amen. Not saying God's a radio, but God communicate in two parties, not just one party. And I made a mistake, my friend. Even though my wife said God came to her and God said that was your husband, God didn't come to me. Hey, yes, I'm saying that God did not come to me and say this was my wife. Amen. Because if she was my wife, she will follow me wherever I go fellowship. Amen. She will do the same thing that I do. She will, she will pray. She will fast. She will do fellowship. She will be right behind me in fellowship. Hey, glory to God. Because you're going to marry somebody that love God. Not just love pleasure. Not just love things. Not just love to clean the house. Not just love to wash my clothes. But love God. Love the God that I love. Amen. Do you, are, are you listening to what I'm saying? So to remember God, we must remember God by, by marrying the right person. Not just marry a person because they're good in bed. Not because you marry a person because, because they got Coca-Cola Coca -Cola bottle shape. Not because they have long hair. They got beautiful eyes because they got good shape. Hey, they got a good butt. They got a good breast. Hey, Amen. Glory to God. And they're good in bed. No, my friend, because the Bible says, Marriage is honorable, amen, but whoremongers and adultery, God going to judge. The bed is undefiled. Hey, glory to God. So God is in the bedroom, hey, because the Bible said the bed is undefiled. Glory to God. Not defiled, but undefiled. So God is concerned about who we married. Amen. Just don't marry anybody. Amen. Just don't marry because you are lonely. Don't make marry because you feel in love. Because love is not a feeling. Love is factual. Love is a spirit. A hey, glory to God. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Are you listening to me? Amen. So make sure you, the person you marry, make sure they love God. And they love you. Because I'm going to read, glory to God, amen, uh, 1 Corinthians Amen. The thirteenth chapter, verse one through six. I'm gonna read it before I close this 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 uh, 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 a series. Uh, amen. About remember God. Cause when you remember God, you must have love, not just lust. Because lust is a dangerous thing. Lust will destroy the family. Lust will make a man leave his wife, leave his children, and leave and go marry somebody else. Lust. Lust is a demon. Lust, the first person to commit lust was Eve. When she saw the fruit and, and she desired it and picked it. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So the Bible say, amen, that Lemuel, amen, Proverbs 31 verses 1 all the way through 31. So bear with me as I teach 
this part of remember the creator in marriage. Yes, remember the creator in marriage. Marriage is a serious thing. Marriage is not a plaything. Marriage is not not say I do and that's why you say you don't take glory to God. Marriage is not for a year year time getting married and that's it. Marriage is not to cover your homosexuality and your home and your lesbianism. Some people get married because they they want to they want to cover up their perversion. You don't get married to cover your perversion. Amen. And when I say perversion, because you have addiction, amen, for sex, you don't get married. You don't get married because you are homosexual and by you getting married to her, it kind of cover your homosexuality. No, my friend, you get married for love. You get married because God put y'all together. Amen. Glory to God. You don't get married because your friends say that's a nice person to get married. You don't get married because your father say marry. No, my friend. You get married because God say you should get married. Amen. So marriage is a serious thing. Marriage is not to get divorced because she can't cook no more. She can't, she can't cook no more. She can't clean no more because, amen, she's not good in bed no more. No, my friend, oh, he's not good in bed no more because you decided that he's broke, he's disgusted, and you decided that I'm going, going, I'm going down to get divorced because I don't love you no more. Why a sudden love is changeable? Amen, glory to God. Love is not changeable, my friend. Love is a spirit. Amen. Love is not, not a feeling. Love is not lust. And that's the problem in, in America and in our world. We are married because of lust. We are married because what our eyes see. The Bible say, amen, the lust of the eyes. Amen. We are married because what, what our eyes see, what our mind perceive. We're not married because God put y'all together. Hey, glory to God. You get married because of money. Hey, glory. You get married because of material things. Hey, glory to God. You get married because of feeling. You get married because you want to do her. Glory to God. You want to do him. That's not the reason getting married. Marriage is a covenant. Marriage is a ministry. Glory to God. Marriage is not about Hollywood. Marriage is not about sex. Hey, marriage is not about material things, but marriage is a commitment be between a man and a woman, not between two men, not between two women, not between a, a man and a beast, not between a man and a teddy bear, not because a man and an animal, not because a man and a tree, glory to God, but man, marriage is between a man and a man. And a woman, the Constitution don't know nothing about marriage. Hey, glory to God! Before the before the Constitution was, it was God. So Constitution ain't got nothing to do with marriage. The state ain't got nothing to do with marriage. The Constitution ain't got nothing to do with marriage, and the Supreme Court got nothing to do with marriage. Marriage is between God and His people. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So Lemuel, Amen. In Proverbs 31, amen, glory to God, amen, remember that creator in marriage, amen, glory to God. And it say that the word of the king Lamuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. And that's the problem. We break the vows too much. Amen. Vow is, is an agreement unto death do you apart. It's not about prenupt. Prenup. Hey, glory to God. It's not about you getting one share and she getting another share. No, it's an agreement between two parties. I know a lot of people say that I should I should have been divorced, but I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting until my change come. Listen, I'm not looking. Hey, glory to God. So for, this, for those that are, are to, to want to marry the prophet, listen, my friend, I'm already married. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, I'm not looking to get married again. Period. Glory to God. Hey, I'm going to put a pin on it. I'm not getting, I'm not waiting for my wife to die to get married again. I'm not looking. My mission is to preach. Amen. To teach. 
Amen. To teach, to preach, and to prophesy. That's my that's my mission. Amen. So even though my wife died or whatever happened, I'm not thinking about getting married again. Because marriage is a ministry. Marriage is a vow. Marriage is between a man and a woman. So Lamuel, the word of King Lamuel, the prophecy that his mother told him, what my son and what the son of my son and what the son of my vow. Give not that strength unto woman, nor the ways to that which is destroy king. It is not for king, O Elamiel, it is not for king to drink wine, nor the prince's strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any that afflicted. Strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those be heavy hearted. Let him think, drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb, and the cause of all such as are point to destruction. Open the mouth, judge the righteous, and play the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find this the part? Listen, so I've read from verse 1 and 9 talking about drinking. Now, drinks have destroyed marriage also because he found out he's trying to drink his misery away. Hey man, you don't drink your misery away. What you need to do is get on your knees and pray to God. Marriage, hey glory to God, is is a is a process that is hard, but there's nothing too hard for God. And we must get down on our knees and pray to God when we're going through difficult situation. Don't drink yourself away. Don't smoke yourself away. But you ought to do, you ought to go to God about it. Amen. Glory to God. But verse 10, and it's the part on marriage. Remember that creator in the days of youth. Amen. Remember that creator in marriage. Amen. He said, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. And you can't find, hey, glory to God, a virtuous woman by you giving a nice car. By you buying the best house, by you buying the rubies and diamonds and platinums, glory to God, amen. Buying her a, a million dollar outfit, glory to God, amen. You can you buy her a ten million dollar ruby because you commit adultery, amen. Glory to God, but who can find a virtuous woman? For her her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband of does safely trust in her so that she should not need of spoil. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's a seek wo now this is a this is a wife that love her husband and a husband that love his wife. Now she's working in the house now. Oh glory to God. Amen. The the worst mistake we, we have made is making making a woman make more than a man Hey, glory to God, because she become she become conceited by she think that she, by she making in, in a more money than her husband, she's more greater than her husband. No, you're not greater than your husband because you make more money than your husband. Because the man is the head and you the tail. Hey, Amen. The the man have rule over you in spite of you making more money than he making. Hey, glory to God. Amen. But but it's a it's a oneness in this marriage. Hey Amen. I'm not greater than you, and she's not greater than me. We are one. We are one flesh. That means we have one bank account. Hey, glory to God. Amen. That means you know, every finance that's going out of the house, each party knows about it. Amen. She is, she is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She, she rises it also while it is yet night and gives it meat to her household and a portion of to her maiden. So the wife now, she take care of the household. And the husband go out to work. Hey, glory to God. Amen. But that's not the case now. In, in our society now, society destroy the home. Hey, glory to God. Because a woman don't do her housely deeds no, anymore. Hey, glory to God. 
Amen. She considered a field and bite it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She girded her loin with strength and strengthened her harm. She perceived, she perceived that her her merchandise of good, she her can of gourd not out by night. So she's staying up and she take care of the household. Amen. Glory to God. She strengthened her hands to the poor, yet she reached forth her hands to the needy. So she given to the needy. Hey, glory to God. I'm talking about virtuous woman. I'm talking about remember that creator in marriage. Hey, glory to God. Amen. She is she is not afraid of the snow. She's not afraid of bad weather. Amen. For a household, for all her household are are clothed with scarlet. She she makes sure our household is warm. Hey, glory to God. She makes her herself covering a tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gate. That means that the community knows her husband. Her husband is not a playboy. Her husband is not a dog. Her husband is not a whoremonger. It's not a monger because a, a whore is a female and a monger is the male. So a husband is not a monger. Hey, glory to God. A husband is known in the gate and when he said it among the elders of the gate. Hey, glory to God. So he's well known. Hey, glory to God. He is like a leader in the home and leader everywhere he goes. Amen. I'm talking about remember that creator in marriage. Amen. Glory to God. She make it fine linen and sell it and deliver curl unto the merchandise. This woman is a working woman. This woman is taking care of the household and is taking care of the finance that's in the home. Amen. Glory to God. Men, if you are bad with finance, let your husband deal with the finance. Hey, glory to God. And that's a problem in our society. We are not one. Hey, glory to God. We are two in entity. We ought to be one flesh. There's no fighting. There's no ism. There's love. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So this woman is a wise woman. This woman is a very teachable woman. When she opened her mouth, she don't say foolish gestures. When she opened her mouth, she don't say dirty jokes. Amen. Everything comes out of our mouth is wisdom. Amen. Is, is 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 kindness. Hey, glory. She looked well to the ways of her household and eating not the bread of idleness. She don't stay home and watch soap opera. Hey, glory. She don't stay home and watch the the housewives of New York or, the, or housewives of Chicago. Amen. But this woman, amen, she don't know idleness. She don't let the TV rules her household. She don't learn from the television. She don't learn from Hollywood. Hey, she don't learn from the the, the soap opera of uh, of uh, uh, Nigeria, uh, 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 soap opera. Glory to God. But she learned from the Bible. She's learned her amen from God. She don't sit on and watch television. Soap opera, Days of Our Lives, or uh, Young and the Restless, General Hospital, Passion. No, my friend, she are busy in the household. Amen, glory to God. Her husband rise up and call her blessed. Uh, uh, her children don't cuss her out. Her children don't holler her. Her children don't call her dog. Amen, glory to God. But she call, the children call her blessed. Her husband also and he prays her. He prays his wife. So the children are obedience. They bless their mother. Hey Amen. Glory to God. They don't they don't live they don't live in a household where all the bills are belong to the to the to the mother and the father. Hey Amen. And these are teenagers. Hey Amen. These are children that are going to college. Hey, glory to God. These are not children that have two jobs and not take care of no bills in the house. Hey, glory to God. But these are children that are going to school. These are children that are going to college. And if they're not going to college, hey amen, they have moved out on their own. Hey amen, glory to God. They're not putting pressure 
amen, on the parents, glory to God, but these are children that are even in middle school or high school or college, hey, glory to God, and the parents are taking care of them, amen, they are, these children are not there, amen, buying iPhones and buying cars and buying clothes and, 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 and living free, no, these are children, amen, that are in the household and they are taking care of their future, amen. And if they're not taking care of their future, they have moved out and moved out on their own because soon or later their parents going to get old and they're going to be a senior citizen, amen, and then the children going to be homeless because they're not planning for their future, amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I'm saying, remember that creator in marriage. Hey, glory to God. You have raised your children. Amen. And they become very intelligent. Amen. They're not stupid. Amen. They're not uneducated, but they are smart. Hey, glory to God. When you know God, you are smart and you're intelligent. Hey, glory. To God. You are not street, street walkers. You are not night walkers. Amen. But you are intelligent because God is is in your mind. God is in your thought. He's in your thought pattern. Amen. Glory to God. But remember thy creator in marriage. Amen. Glory to God. So her children rise up and call her blessed. They say mama is blessed. And the husband wakes up also and call her blessed. But not in our society. You got two parties working. Hey, glory to God. No one time, no one has the time to take care of the children. The Bible says, train a child and the way it should go. When it get old, it shall not depart from it. I believe I've done a good job. Hey, glory to God. Hey, man, I believe my wife has done a good job. Hey, man, so all, hey, man, is, is rely on the children obeying God. Hey, man, glory to God. But verse 30 says, Verse 29 say, many daughters have done virtuously, noble, but thou excellence them all. So I'm talking about a virtuous woman. Amen. Husband, I mean a man that looking for a woman, make sure she's virtuous. Make sure she love God. She love the things of God and she going to church. Hey, glory to God. She got a foundation. She got a covering over her life. Amen. Make sure that she loves the things of God. Because the Bible says that don't find a woman that loves pleasure. She loves to go to parties. She loves to go to club. She loves to go to concert. She loves to go to amusement parks. Amen. On Sunday. That's not a woman to marry. But you're going to find you a woman that loves the things of God. You work five days a week and on Saturday you are to rest and you are to go to church. Hey, glory to God. Amen. It's not for you to party, your party, be a party pooper on on Friday night. Amen. And rest on on Saturday and be 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 uh going to church on Sunday. No, my friend. Saturday is for you to rest and Sunday is for fellowship. But fellowship ought to be every day of your life. Amen. Some people just go to church on Sunday and put down the Bible on Sunday and become the devil on Monday. Amen. Cussing on Tuesday, whoring on Wednesday, telling lies on Thursday. Amen. And Friday become a freaky Friday. And Saturday, you kick your legs in the club. And Sunday, you have a hung hangover and you are worshiping God. No, my friend, that's not the way you do it. Amen. You ought to be happy on Monday. Tuesday, you ought to be happy. Wednesday, you ought to be happy. Thursday, you ought to be happy. And Friday, you ought to be happy. Because happiness don't rely on the day. A lot of people say, I thank God it's Friday. What about Monday? What about Tuesday? What about Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday? You just thank God for one day? Hey, glory to God. But you ought to thank God for every day. Because the Bible said, this is the day the Lord has, has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But I'm still on the same subject. Amen. Remember the creator in the days of marriage. Amen. Don't, just, just don't marry you a prostitute. 
Don't marry you a pimp, hey, glory to God, but marry you a man of God and marry you a, a woman of God um, or marry you a virtuous woman and marry you a man of God. Hey, Amen. You don't have to be a pastor or a preacher, but make sure you marry a man that love God. Don't marry you a player. Don't marry you a, you a male whore or male prostitute or female prostitute, or thought, a hey, glory to God, but you're going to marry you somebody that love the things of God. Remember that creator in marriage. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, because marriage is a ministry. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Marriage is between a, a man and a woman. Amen. Glory to God. Don't want the Bible say. Amen. And, and, and I must read it because a lot of people don't believe when, when I say marriage is between a man and a woman. And the Bible say, amen, amen, that, that how Adam was alone. Hey, glory to God. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall unto Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and, and clothes of the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had, had taken from man made he woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Man don't have a womb. I'm going to say that. Man does not have a womb. Man does not have a vagina. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So man does not have a womb. Woman have a womb for the children to come out the womb. So man, even though you have a, you have a, 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 a surgery to make a womb, you're still a man because you was not made into a woman. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and she shall be one flesh. And they both were, and both, and they were both naked, and man and his wife were not ashamed. What will happen? The serpent came in chapter 3. And then she picked the fruit. And then there was naked. And there was a shame. And then sin is entered into this world. And that's why I'm on the subject of remember that creator in the days of marriage. Amen. You got to, you got to love God. Amen. You got to love God in your marriage. You got to love somebody that love God to marry them. Because if not, you're going to get divorced. If not, you're going to say, I quit. In, if not, you're going to walk out of the marriage and marry somebody else. And then you're going to go through a cycle of being married five to ten times. You will get remarried over and over and over again. Divorcement was because the hardness of your heart. But in the beginning, God made male and female. Moses gave y'all a, a divorcement because of the hardness of your heart. But in the beginning, it was not so. Moses gave you this bill of divorcement. But not in the beginning. God did not create divorcement. It's because the hardness of your heart, you put away your wife. You put away your husband. People get married for one year and get divorced. Ten years get divorced. Three weeks get divorced. Well, now you can't get divorced for three weeks, but you are separated for three weeks. You go to the honeymoon and then you say, I thought it would be what I thought it would be. And then you say, you're very disappointed. You know why? Because God didn't put y'all together. Flesh put y'all together. Lust put y'all together. Feelings put y'all together. Likes put y'all together. People put y'all together. Friends put y'all together. Your family put y'all together. You listen to your mother 
put y'all together. And now you are divorced. Now he left you and you left him and he don't want to be with you anymore. And I must say this. For, you, for those that are out there, hey man, you having sexual uh, uh, promiscuity, you are loose with your, with, your, with your body. When it's time for you to get married, you're going to be a swamp. You're going to be no good. Hey man, you're going to be an open swamp. That means a man going to have sex with you and you're going to be, be, be very disappointed because you give it to everybody in the neighborhood. You give it to everybody in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia or the whole community. And when it's time for you to get married, you're going to be an open well. You're going to be an open swamp. You're going to be worn out. You're going to be no good. And a man going to say, I'm very disappointed. He going to go to his friends and say, I married somebody that I'm thinking about divorcing. You know why? Because number one, you was not a virgin. Amen. Number two, you didn't save yourself for the one that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Amen. So remember your creator in the days of marriage. Don't give it to him. Amen. Until he give you a ring, not a condom. Amen. Not a condom. Amen. You won't give it to him. Amen. When he give you engagement ring, not, amen, give you a condom because by him giving you a condom, that means it's a temporary one day stance love. Lust. Because it's not even love. He can't say he love you so he want to have sex with you. No. He lusting after you. That's why you want to have sex with you. So when a man give you a condom as representing a ring, because the ring is right here. And a condom is right here. So if he give you this ring, that means he love you. If he give you a condom, that means he lusting after you. And it can be a one night stand. Hey Amen. Come on. Remember that creator in marriage. Marriage is honorable. And the, un and the bed is under fire. But whoremongers and adulterers, God going to judge you. Think about the process. Amen. If you marry this man, amen, and you are a virgin, amen, he don't even think about sex. The only thing he want to spend, he want to spend his life with you for the rest of his life on earth. So he gave you a platinum diamond ring. Hey, glory to God. But on the, on the flip side, if a man or, or, or a little boy say that he lusting after you and he will just he just want to taste the water he gonna give you a condom and a condom represent a one night stand a condom represent he don't love you he lusting after you and he love your body and he don't want to spend the rest of your life with you so he gonna have sex with you every time he see you he want to have sex with you with a condom or unprotected sex amen think about it Remember that creator in marriage. Marriage is a ministry. Marriage is, sex is between marriage people, not single people. Hey, glory to God. Amen. And that's a problem in our society. We are not teaching our children about the sanctity, the sanctity of marriage. Amen. Save yourself for the one that you love, for the, you will spend the time with you for the rest of your life. Not to be a whore, not to be a thought, not to be a be a whoremonger, hey amen, not to give it to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, but to give it to the one that you're going to spend the rest of your life with until, until death do your part. That's what marriage is for. Marriage is, is a vow, it's a commitment, it's a stability that you're going to spend the rest of your life with this one man, this one woman, until death do you a part. Marriage is not like changing your drawers. Marriage is not like changing your socks or changing your clothes. Marriage is a commitment. Amen. It's a covenant. Amen. It's an agreement. It's a vow. And a vow means I'm going to keep this vow until death do me apart. There are marriages. Amen. You, some of y'all get married, a divorce because... Oh, his sex is not good. Amen. Or oh, oh, he's he is sexually active. You should have known that before you marry him. 
Now you marry him. Now you want to jump out of the fire and jump in the fire and pan. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Get healed first. Amen. Find the, the reason why you're going to get married. You don't get married because you're lonely. You don't get married because you need somebody on your bed to keep your bed warm. Hey, glory to God. Hey, if that's the case, get a get a get a teddy bear. <laughs> if th that's the case, get a get a bed that's that's warm. Glory to God. But you don't get married for those fleshly things or those things you see with your eyes. You get married because you love someone. And love is a spirit, it's not a feeling. Amen. Let me put it out there. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 30. Favor is the seat. Charm. Hey, glory to God. Amen. And, and I'm going to say this now. That a lot of people get married because somebody charm you. Somebody trick you. Somebody bamboozle you. Amen. Glory to God. But you, 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 don't, get, you don't get married for, for somebody charm you with an eyelash. Somebody charm with their with breasts or with their butt, with their behind. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But you love someone. Make sure it's love and make sure God say that's the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Because the devil is not God. Amen. Favor is deceit and beauty is vain. Some people get married because of beauty. Someone get married because she looked good. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. She shaped good. She got a good shape. She got long hair. She got beautiful eyes. She got beautiful lips. She got beautiful hips. Hey, man, because she walks so sexy. That's not the purpose of getting married. Hey, man, beauty is vain. Beauty is vanity. And Solomon married 700 wives and 300 concubines. And if you look at each one of those women, they were beautiful. But those women turned his heart away from his God. You don't marry because of the lust of the eyes, amen, and the lust of the flesh, amen. But you marry somebody because God sent them to you, and it's, and it's because of love, amen, glory to God. Not because of beauty, because beauty may turn to be ugly. Amen. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Hey, glory to God. Beauty is not predicated in what we see. It's what we see unseen. Amen. Because Jacob made the mistake also. Amen. He didn't, he didn't wanna he didn't wanna mess with Leah because she she had weak eyes, because she was ugly. But he wanna marry Rebecca. Hey, glory to God. He will marry Rachel. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So Leah ended up having more kids than Rachel. Hey, glory to God. So beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Back to it. You got to marry somebody that loves the things of God, that love God, that pray, that praise, that pray, that worship God. Amen. Don't marry you a heathen. Don't marry you a, a woman that that like Jezebel. Hey, glory! I read, I have a series on my website because I identify the spirit of Jezebel. Hey, Amen. And we got this. now Jezebel was a was a beautiful woman, but she she was a very deceitful woman. She was a she let the devil demons enter into her life, even though she's beautiful. She was the very de de deceitful, very evil very wicked and and satan was her god are you listening to me so on this last series amen of remember thy creator in marriage we gotta marry a godly person amen and you you church folks you safe folks stop marrying you a heathen stop marrying a person that don't love god and you trying to make this man Get saved. You can't make somebody be saved. You can invite them to church. Amen. Amen. You can you can tell them about God, but let God do the increase. You don't you don't marry somebody because they're going to church, but you marry somebody because they're saved. You marry somebody because they're sanctified, they're justified, and they are born again. 
Amen. You marry somebody that, that love the things of God, that are saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. You, you, you can't save that man. You can't save that girl. Amen. So we made a mistake of marrying a heathen. How can two walk together except they are green? green? You're unequally yoke. I, I, I looked at a movie called I Married a Church Girl. I'm in love with a church girl. Hey, man, if you're going to be in love with a, with a church girl, I hope you get saved. Hey, glory to God. I hope that church girl is praying for you. I hope that church girl is not letting you kiss. Hey, man, not letting you sleep with. Hey, man, glory to God, because if she's involved in sex, she's not a church girl. She's a church girl, but she's not a, a saved church girl. Hey, glory to God. But I really enjoyed that movie. That movie, In Love with a Church Girl. Hey man, I was duped. I thought I was in love with a church girl until I got married. She stopped going to church. Hey, glory to God. Hey Amen. So we got to not be hung up on beauty. You don't, marry, you don't marry somebody because they're beautiful. You marry somebody because they are saved. They're sanctified. And they're Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. And they have the, the nine fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And the nine fruit of spirit, if you don't know it, I'm going to leave it right here for you to marinate on it. Amen. So favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fear the Lord, she shall be praised. You praise somebody that are, 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 are beautiful in the sight of God and they are saved. You say, you look beautiful today. But if they're not beautiful, if they're beautiful and they're not saved, you won't praise them. Do what the Bible say. Glory to God. Amen. And she shall be praised. But give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own work praise her in the gate. Hey, glory to God. So I'm saying to you all that you got to marry you somebody that, that is a saved and sanctified Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. You don't marry you a heathen like Solomon did. Solomon made a mistake of marrying paganistic girls, women, that is turn his heart away from his, the God of Israel. And I'm telling you all that if you want to marry somebody, make sure that person is saved. Make sure that person love God. Make sure that person is spiritually saved. Not say they're saved, but they have their fruit as saying they are saved. And this is the part that I must say. When they are saved, they must have love. Hey, glory to God. Amen. And for those, and I'm not going to read all the scriptures now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the important of it. Because a lot of people don't know what love is. They think love is a feeling. Hey, glory to God. Hey, glory. Amen. But listen, listen what the Bible say about love. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, verses 4. Amen. Glory to God. Charity suffered long, love suffered long, and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity vaunt, vaunt not itself. Charity don't push itself. Ain't it? Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Secret not our own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. I'm talking about love. Hey, glory to God. Love does not, love suffereth long and is kind. Charity invit not. Charity vaunt not itself. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeking not our own. Is not easily provoked. Thinking not evil. Rejoice not in a nicotine, but rejoice in truth. Beareth. This is, this is the part now about love. If you say you love him, when you stand before the altar, amen, and say you love this man or you love this woman, the Bible say, beareth all things. What beareth all things? Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endure all things. Now, that what keeping me in my marriage for 26 years is this Scripture, 
because the Bible says the word is spirit and they are life. So if you are in a marriage right now and you're going through a difficult situation, amen, and if he's, if he's faithful to you, amen, if he have not cheated on you, but if he have other problems, you must read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse number 7. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Charity never fail. Hey, glory to God. Love never fail. Do you hear me? This, the Bible says love never fail. But what, what, whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, for those tongue speakers, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be vanished away. Oh, glory to God. I'm still on the subject of love. I'm still on the subject of marriage. For some of y'all, you have, have lied to God. You just don't lie to man. You have lied to, you have lied to God. Even though you went to the justice of peace where there was justice and you saying that there was no peace. But I can tell you, for me, it was justice and it was peace. I found peace with God. Hey, glory to God. And you have lied to, to God and man because you are divorced. If he have not been, if he have not have infidelity, amen, the marriage is broken up, period. But if he is doing everything, he say he loves you and he's faithful to you. Amen. Even though he's not good in bed, even though, though he he can he cannot uh, uh, kiss right, and and if he loves sex, you should not divorce this man. You should not divorce this woman. If you get married on the honeymoon and the sex is very disappointed. And you you going back to your friends and say that we went on a honeymoon and the sex was not good. Hey, glory to God. And you say you want to get divorced? You didn't love in the beginning. You were lusting in the beginning. You liked in the beginning. I didn't say it, Bob. The Bible say charity never fail. If you say you love this man, you say you love this woman, and all of a sudden now you saying that, you don't love them? In the beginning, you don't you didn't love in the beginning, my friend. Because the Bible says charity never fails. Charity is love. Charity is not just giving, even though love is giving. But the Bible says charity never fail. Love never fail. It was love that lifted me. The Bible says love covered the multitude of sin. Great love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Marriage is about love, not about lust, not about likes, not about money, not about material things, not about sex. Hey, glory to God. But marriage is about love. Is about God. Hey Amen. It's not about sex. Sex is for marriage. As marriage is for sex. Hey, glory to God. That's why sex is not for singleness. Hey, Amen. But charity never fail. And some of y'all say that, oh, I'm going to marry him because I love him. No, you marry him because you're lusting after him. You marry him because he got money. You murmur because he looked good. Well, what happened if he got caught in a fire and his face get defigured? Or oh, opposite, if she ended up being fat and, and weighs 600 pounds, are you still going to love her? You make a vow. Hey, man, what the vow say? What the vow say? I can't hear you. Hey, man, you made a vow to God. Hey, man, glory to God. You made a vow to God and now you are breaking the vow? Come on. Hey man, you have lied to God and you lied to the priest or the or the judge that marry you and all of a sudden you are falling out of the love. 
It was lust in the beginning. Love and lust is, is not, they're not brothers and sisters. Lust is different. Lust is a crave. And love is charity. Lust is a crave, my friend. It's a it's the desire that would never be satisfied. That's what lust is. And we are making a mistake of lusting rather than loving. Hey, glory to God. The house, the courthouse is full of folks that lust. You get married for you get married for lust, and you will end up being divorced the next five years, or seven years, or ten years. Amen. But love is between a man and a woman. Amen. Two men can love each other. You love each other because you are brothers. But you don't, you don't say you love him because you want to marry him. Or, or, or you, you, two women are, 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 are in love together because you want to marry. No, my friend. You are breaking the vow. You are breaking commitment. You are breaking the, the nature of God. Marriage is between a man and a woman. That's why I say remember the creator in marriage. You got to remember God. You got to remember Jesus Christ. He and Jesus Christ is the creator. Amen. Because if you have your Bible, turn uh, to John chapter 1 verse 3. Amen. He made all things. And without him, nothing was made. So I'm telling you that's watching in my closing as I close the book. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Amen. But but I'm going to say this. Verse 12, verse 11. When, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became a woman, I put away childish thing. It's time for you to stop putting, put away childish thing and be grown. Be adults. Stop acting like children. You have intangible. You, you can't have your way. Hey, glory to God. Paul say, when I was a child, I speak as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Stay out of Toys R Us. Stop, stop having toys in the bedroom. Hey, glory to God. Pray about things. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Come on. Verse 12. For I know we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also known. Hey, glory to God. Now we see there's a preview. When we get to heaven, my friend, hey, glory to God. That's why Jesus Christ told the man, friend, where comest thou not having a, a wedding garment on? Hey, glory to God. And the wedding garment is the Holy Ghost. Hey, man, that's why I say remember that creator in marriage. God got to be part of marriage. And y'all stop, amen, marrying people with the Bible when there are two men or two women. You don't have the Bible there. You have an ordinary book, but not the Bible. Because the sanity of marriage is between a man and a woman, not between two men, not between two women. Hey, glory to God. That's perversion. Amen. Verse 12. Verse 13, and now abide faith, have faith in God, hope, expectation in God, and charity, love. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. In my closing of remember thy creator in marriage, Solomon Amen. Lost fellowship with God. Because Solomon's heart was not with God anymore. And don't make the mistake, my friend. Don't let somebody that you marry turn your heart away from God. Don't let this woman take you to the casino. Don't let this woman... Make your heart be away from you. You stop praying. You stop reading the word of God. You stop going to church. Hey, glory to God. Amen. But you marry somebody that are God-fearing. Amen. Love somebody that love the things of God. Amen. Glory to God. Stop marrying you a Jezebel. 
Hey, glory to God, because Jezebel is a spirit. And the reason why she's named Jezebel is not because of her name. Her name, her name match her characteristic. Because Jezebel is a spirit, is an evil spirit, is a div, 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 deadly spirit. Amen. And people that name their children after these ungodly people, they, they adopt their character of what this person is. I never heard somebody name their children uh, Jezebel. I heard Isabel, but not Jezebel. Amen. Glory to God. So what I'm saying in closing, marry you a godly person, a God-fearing person, not a heathen, not a person that going to church, but, but you say, are they a churchgoer? But you're going to marry you a person that is a God-fearing person. Don't marry you a whore. Don't marry you a prostitute. Don't marry you a pale, a, a male prostitute. Don't marry you a player or a playboy. Don't marry because he's handsome. Don't marry because he's pretty. But marry a person that love God, that love to go to church, that love the Bible, that love the things of God. How long ought you between to opinion? Don't marry you a lukewarm person. Marry you a hot person. A person on fire for God. Amen. As I close, let me say a prayer for you. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. This person that is thinking about getting married, oh God. Let them marry a saved man, a saved woman, oh God. Oh God, let them learn from Solomon's story that Solomon had 700 wives and 3,000 3, concubines, oh God. The woman turned his heart away from his God. Oh God, this person that is thinking about marriage or thinking about having a companionship, make sure it's against the opposite sex, not with the same sex, because the same sex is abomination in the sight of God. Save that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Oh God, someone that's viewing this, this video is sick in their body, oh God. Heal them right now. Hey, God, I'm Somebody, Lord, that been married for five years and still don't, don't have no children, oh God. Bless the womb. Touch the womb right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, touch the man, Lord, that have fertile sperm, oh God. Touch the, hey, God, I don't shot that, God, I don't know. Touch the embryos right now. Touch the egg so the sperm and the egg to get together and bring the fetus and the embryo and bring a child. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch that man, touch that woman right now that, that complicating, oh, oh God, abortion. Oh God, touch that child right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, let them know that who report do they believe? I re believe the report of the Lord. Oh God, doctor might see something, but Lord, Dr. Jesus, touch that child in the, in the womb right now. In the name of Jesus, touch right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go to my website. That's RomeInternational.org. That's RomeInternational.org. Until next time, my friend. God love you richly is my prayer. Peace be unto you.